Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are back in processing games and we will be playing a game called Mandagon. Now Mandagon can be found on Steam and it is basically just a little adventure game. Uh, it seems to be uh, basically just the 2D kind of... Well, when, when I talk about side-scrollers it's kind of interesting because it feels like a side-scroller but instead of going uh, from just side to side you also go up and down. And the main objective seems to be to try and collect these pieces and then put the pieces in the places where they're supposed to be, which uh, fills a picture in the center of the map, and then you basically go from there. Generally, when it comes to Steam free-to-play, for me, I've seen a lot of games on Steam free free to play, and a lot of them seem to be MMORPGs, uh, which have been around for a very long time. There's a lot of games which are basically just re-uploaded uh, to Steam, which have existed for quite a while. Uh, games from 2005, 2006, and they're basically oh dear, uh, we can't jump in the water by the way. We have to use these little things, and they're basically just put on Steam because. Why not? And they are also labelled as new releases, and obviously they're not very new. So when it comes to Steam and when it comes to free-to-play, you generally see a lot of games which are MMOs and the like. Uh, examples, I mean War Thunder is technically an MMO, a massive multiplayer online. Uh, let's just activate this, just so we can get that lift working up there. And there we go, let's go up. So when it comes to finding different games, little action games or little adventure games, you generally don't see a lot on Steam. But when you do, a lot of them are awful, <laughs> to be quite honest. And then you get little hidden gems here and there, and I suppose that it's kind of like how gaming has worked for a very long time, where you may have ten games and they may all be very, very similar. But for some reason, one of them really stands out compared to the rest. You can play uh, 10 RTSs, uh, even 10 World War II RTSs, and one of them will stand out for you, and you will really enjoy it. Same with shooters, mainly with shooters. And for me personally, this is one of those games which actually stands out. It stands out in uh, the genre that it's in. I mean, I would call it kind of 2D or 2.5D, two, two uh, I suppose it would be 2D, uh, side-scroller, up-scroller, whatever scroll, I should just call it scroller, it stands out just because the music is kind of eerie, it changes as you go to different places, which is always nice, the actual art style of the thing, it clicks with me. It, to me, looks very, very nice. And I understand, for other people, that may not be the case. Maybe they think it doesn't look very nice. But it is a very subjective thing. And it's very easy to control. Uh, basically, if you are using a keyboard, it is WASD, so W, A, S, and D to move, space to jump, and E to interact with stuff. If you are using a controller, which seems to be the preferred way, but definitely doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> when, when it comes down to it, uh, let's try and get this. As you can see, we're collecting these pieces right now from different houses around the levels. Um, when it comes down to it, because it seems to just be a single player game, a little single player adventure game, it doesn't seem to matter if you use the keyboard or controller. It's just your kind of your personal preference. So this is what I was talking about before, where we've collected pieces from various houses, and we have to place them on this tablet. And that seems to uh, basically sort out an objective for us, which is kind of nice. So there we go, we've put the cross down. And we go up here, which is the center part. And there we go. We've filled in a little slot for ourselves. Now, something, and also now that we've unlocked it, we can see where we are on the map. So this is the whole map. And one thing I've always kind of had a pet peeve about, and I know, that, once again, very subjective. I've always liked the idea of games which roll on and on and on. 
What I mean by that is, if you have a side scroller, then it just keeps going. There's no real loading screens or anything like that. It's a reason why I've always uh, liked games such as Just Cause, because Just Cause, unless you're playing missions, let's just say you're free roaming around the world, which is generally all of the time, there's no loading screens. The same with games like GTA. Where have I gone? Okay. <laughs> I've never been over here before, that's weird. It, it seems like a cave. That's pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, I, I like the idea of just roaming around a world. And seeing what it has to offer. Not being stopped five seconds by loading screens. One of my favourite skateboarding games, uh, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, I thought was an absolutely brilliant game. Absolutely just fun to play. It, the writing, the script was kooky, it was odd, the character creation was crazy. Some of the missions you had to do were actually kind of hard, or at least I found them very hard. And it meant that you know, the game itself worked really well. Uh, what? Okay, I just fell f fell through the ground. I'm guessing there are some bugs. I'm guessing that is a bug. That can't be a, a feature, as some people would call it. <laughs> but uh, we can't get up there. I think we've gone back to the beginning here. But one, one of the big issues I had with Tony Hawk's, and will always have with Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, is the loading screens. Because it felt like such a momentum killer in the game. Now when it came to the old Tony Hawk's, where they were very much level based and it was all about how many points you could score and what you could find around the levels, it makes sense to have loading screens. But when you have this open world, loading screens can really be a big issue. And for me personally, I don't mind if a game is centered around uh, levels. That's why uh, game design like Enemy Front or uh, any real FPS, to be quite honest, is fine doing it that way. But when it comes to a little indie adventure game, it is nice to have a designated map. It is nice to have no loading screens. It is nice to just be able to travel around the world and experience it for yourself. I mean, even going into buildings, it's not a loading screen. It takes two seconds. It's not really loading anything, it's more just to change uh, the scenery. Now, something that's interesting, first of all, the, um... Let's just go back up. As you can see, the reflection and the water is... Well, it's beautiful, in my opinion. Uh, one thing is, you can't actually jump in the water. And, sorry about that noise. The cat is going a bit insane. You can't jump in the water, you have to basically, um, sort, you have to basically go on the air pipes to make you jump up, so there's, you know, there's a, there's a few little interesting things every so often. We're actually gonna go up here if we can. Some of the ledges are quite hard to see sometimes, uh, when you are trying to jump up, but that's not really a big issue. Looks like there's nothing really up here, unless, can I jump on here? No just seems to be kind of an interesting design. The Tiki Man that you have, uh, I would call him a Tiki, other people would have different names. Uh, it's a weird character. <laughs> like, I, I would love to see where they came up with the idea of having this face with a big mouth and uh, big eyes and, you know, just a square blob, basically, because it seems, it seems very odd to me that you would do that. Uh, so there must be some kind of reason for it, instead of just having uh, some humanoid figure or something that just doesn't look crazy. Maybe it is just designed to stand out. And then you have these little things everywhere. I'm guessing they're for story purposes. Uh, obviously everything has a story. A daughter, sleep, a wish to wake, a door of lights her place to take. Wonderful. Back up, and here we go. We can view map here. So we're... Uh, oh dear. So we're up here. And as you can see, it tells you where these places are. Where you have to put the runes, or whatever you want to call them. And once you've un unlocked them, you can actually teleport to them. 
So this is one of those places where we need a rune. And the thing is, we don't have the right rune, so we have to go find it. And that was a terrible jump, so we'll try that again. So it's not just the idea of just finding these rune spots, you also have to find the runes themselves, which is very interesting. And I'm guessing once you complete it, something else happens. There's also a rune spot there, uh, which I've never seen before. But here's the central part, which we were looking at before. And as you can see, there are these lines, right? So I'm guessing when this gets uh, done, then these lines will go, and then you'll be able to go up here and go see Buddha up there, or whoever it is, and see what's going on. So yeah, the, it is just a basic look around the world, enjoy the scenery, try and uh, connect the dots, because there's no real puzzle element to this. I mean, if you're, if you're being really, really serious about it, I mean, the puzzle would be finding the runes and then putting them in the right places, but... Generally, if you go around the world, or at least, you know, as I've done so far, you will find the runes, you will find the rune places, and it's not, uh, here's another one. <laughs> uh, it, it, you know, you, you're not having to do uh, little challenges, or, you know, break rocks, or break things, or move things, anything like that to try and get to these spots. You kind of just find them as you go. So, it's much more about exploration of the world, and as you go around the world, you will find these places. Now, we did run into a, uh, I don't know what you call it, st the stone pillars, we'll call it, uh, that I didn't have the rune for, so I suppose in a way, uh, maybe you're going to run into places where you don't have the runes, but then again, that's completely fine. What is this? Oh yes, of course, a mechanic, <laughs> instead of just jumping. You can fly, and you can fly, to here, and then you press X on the uh, on the controller. I'm not sure what you press on the keyboard for that. There we go. So we got another rune. Uh, so maybe there is an element of backtracking, but generally the the game isn't that big. It's not massive. And my cat has found a broken wheel. It's not massive, so going around this uh, isn't that uh, hard to do. Something that is kind of interesting, though, is as you're going around the game, you you must have realized that most of it is just going up, and then going side to side, and then trying to work out uh, whoop, how to uh, how to get up to the next level. So let's see, can we jump across? Oh, nice. So if you fall. Like, I, I haven't been able to die in this game, uh, which I find quite amazing, because it, when I fall, you just fall to a lower level where you've uh, generally been before, so you, all you have to do is climb back up. I'm not even sure you can die. Uh, it's, it's not something that's happened. Goodbye, birds. So maybe there is a way to die, like if you fall the maximum amount, or uh, maybe you can get crushed by something, but I haven't found anything that would kill me. I mean, it, it seems to just be generally an adventure exploration game, where you're just trying to find these tablets, trying to piece together what's going on, and going to see the, the lady up there after getting all of these runes, or... Uh, I suppose you call them portals activated, because once you have sorted this out, as I've said before, you can teleport. So we're right up here now. So we've basically gone down the whole right side, uh, we came to this one, I believe, so there is one up there, so you can plan your routes if you want. You can plan where you want to go, which is definitely interesting, it's something to do. There's another little house, and there's another room. I mean, they're probably called something else, but I think room makes sense, I suppose you could call it tablets. Uh, but, yeah. It's just a little game where you can relax in, and it also runs pretty well. Uh, if I was... If I was going to make a little critique, sometimes the music can get a little bit dull, but then again, I, I see this much more as a relaxing game. It's not something that you're going full balls to the wall in, so you don't really need action music or piano music or anything like that. <laughs> so, um, uh, it kind of works. There's a bit of eeriness to it. Uh, once you listen to the music and 
you know, you're not commentating over it. I'm pretty lost, actually. I don't know where to go. So you know what? Let's go find something down here. And Ellie up. <laughs> and as I said, you can backtrack around at many of the places, which is nice. But just uh, slap on some classic, relaxing, classical music. And just play this game. The guy looks very distraught. Oh, does it tell you where the pieces are? Oh dear. Alright, so that's there. Let's just see if it does. No, you, you can't click the ones that you don't have. Okay. So we have to find them instead of... It, it tells us where the uh, runes are located if you've already placed them, which makes sense. But I think I'll leave it here. I'm not going to complete the game for you. I definitely think you should go and play it. It is free on Steam. And there will also be a link in the description if you are struggling to find it. Hope you all have a lovely day, and I'll see you next time.